There's a lot of horrible human beings in the world. You know the type. The ones who pour the milk before they pour in the cereal. The ones who don't mind that they step in water with socks, or they wash their hands and they get their sleeves all wet. Or the kind who don't return their shopping carts when they're done using them at the grocery store. But worst of all, and I think we can agree on this one, are cheaters. And here's the psychology behind their dishonesty. So I was scrolling my For You page over on TikTok, something I'm doing a lot less recently because Instagram's been blowing up. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, <laughs> boy, oh boy, you're missing out because honestly, that's where it's at right now. The For You page on TikTok is like all shopping ads and it's just, it's made me kind of miserable. So I find myself not opening TikTok as much, but I did. I did today. I was on my lunch break at work and as I scrolled through, I saw this interesting psychology study that used, let me find it here for you, that used the information from the Ashley Madison leak to show us the psychology behind those people who cheat and are dishonest. It's a relationship between how these individuals react in their personal life versus their professional life. And if you're unfamiliar with Ashley Madison, Ashley Madison was a website where people would go specifically to have extramarital affairs. Think Tinder, but specifically for cheating, right? So you would go there just to hook up outside of your relationship. And so these were all married individuals whose partners were not okay with them, you know, having extramarital affairs, but they would do it anyway. And so uh, I don't, I'm not sure how it leaked. And so maybe someone can tell me in the comments, if y'all are super sleuths, detectives like that, I would be interested to know. Uh, like who actually leaked the data if it was like, you know, some kind of hacker group. But regardless, uh, the data got leaked. And so all the names of the people who had accounts on Ashley Madison, names, email addresses, phone numbers, the whole gambit got leaked on the internet. And so, you know, there was this huge thing. They're like, wow, what a fantastic like group of information that we could use to study. And so some people did. And so they studied the psychology behind those people who are using Ashley Madison. And I saw this video and I had to share it with you because I think this stuff is fascinating. And if you've ever been cheated on in your past, um, I wonder what you think about this in particular. So hit the comments down below and let me know what you're feeling. And while you're there, hit subscribe because it does help spread this channel with other people who may need advice and insight about their mental health. So do me a favor, hit subscribe and do everyone else a favor and share the channel. Let's get to this video. Did you know that the Ashley Madison data leak actually led to a really interesting psychological study for those I didn't until today. <laughs> those of you who don't know, Ashley Madison was this website you could go to to seek extramarital affairs. And basically all the data from this website was leaked, which ruined a lot of people's lives and marriage. Interesting choice with the bamboo behind him. Like, I don't know, is he in like an Ikea furniture store? Like, are they going to escort him out after he records this video? Because I don't know anybody who like willingly chooses that background photo, unless you're in a dentist office, you know what I'm saying? So, um, interesting psychological study. Also interested in the psychology of this individual who, by the way, I should shout them out. Steve psychology, big, big channel doing great things. Go check them out. I just stumbled across them today marriages. But some innovative researchers decided that they could take the data from the Ashley Madison leak, which was publicly available on the internet, and use it to study the psychology of dishonesty. Right. These researchers linked people's Ashley Madison profiles to data that they could find about their real world careers. Gotta love the internet, man. I mean, imagine just living your life and your data gets leaked and then people are able to like go find you on Facebook, go find your LinkedIn profile, see where you work and find all this stuff. Like, it definitely takes time and effort and energy, but there are people. And I know if you're watching this video, you're probably the kind of person who also has that hypervigilant, slightly on the cusp of paranoia ability to find out information about people. Uh, and yeah, it takes a lot of time and energy, but you love it. it. It's it's rewarding in itself for you to find this. And I love you all for being that way. Uh, and so it's just... Ah, the internet's a fascinating place. You know, people used to be able to get away with shit, but I really feel like now that we have the internet, people can't get away with stuff the way that they used to. Uh, and that's kind of fantastic, but also a little scary at the same time. So, yeah. And they found that Ashley Madison users were much more likely to engage in professional misconduct. 
For instance, CEOs who used Ashley Madison were about twice as likely to engage in corporate misconduct than CEOs who did not. In other words, if you have an affair, you're much more likely to do bad things in your professional life, which suggests that personal and professional behavior are linked and there are probably some underlying psychological predispositions that lead us to be dishonest in all areas of our life. And this is this is absolutely true. Like just my my quick thoughts on this is like it's great to see the data behind it, but I also don't think that any of us are surprised. Like if you're willing to have an extramarital affair, you're also probably willing to cheat on your taxes. You're also probably willing to screw over your employees. You're also willing to not pay invoices. And I tell you what, I've had the privilege or the dis privilege of like working with some startup companies and like working with some different people. And just like when you meet CEOs, like it blows my mind. Right? Like when you meet CEOs, oftentimes we have this idea that they've got it all together and they know what to do. They don't got a freaking clue what they're doing most of the time. They're just trying stuff out. And it's almost like the riskier the CEO, the more likely they are to succeed in some ways, or at least to try things that nobody else has tried. And so they're innovative and new and people gain interest. And so it's almost a popularity contest. But like, I, I got to say, you know, CEOs are human beings too. And oftentimes like to be the kind of bold faced person who can say, yeah, I should lead a giant company. They kind of fly in the face of social norms, of laws, of legal legality, of ethics, of morality. You know, they're willing to bend those things. They're like, the world is my oyster and I make of it what I will. A little bit scary, but also like you kind of have to have someone who's ballsy like that at the helm of a company. And so when you look at those who are dishonest in their personal lives, of course they're going to be dishonest as CEOs. And well, sometimes they get away with it. Uh, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Before you go getting sad about this, I tell my clients this all the time. I mean, let me come, come back over here. Pay attention. <clears throat> if you don't mind, that sounded really aggressive. I didn't mean it that way. But here's the thing. Bad things happen to good people. Good things happen to bad people. However, that is not a statistically good way to live your life. Statistically speaking, good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. If you're wearing your seatbelt while you're driving your car and driving safely and not cutting people off, you're more likely to arrive to your destination safely, right? If you're an asshole, you may get lucky and show up at your destination in one piece. However, you're really playing the odds here, right? And so a lot of times people will be like, life is unfair. And I agree, life is unfair. but it's not worth the risk to say, I'm going to be a bad person and do the wrong things and just hope for a good outcome. It's much better to invest in doing the right thing, even if you don't see results right away, because in the majority of cases, good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people. So yeah, you may see a friend who's getting away with making a lot of money with unethical behavior, but the statistics are like the likelihood is that shit's going to catch up with them. And that's not a great way for you to live your life. And so I know it's hard. I know you may feel discouraged about it, but just like we're seeing here, it's not a great solution to how to live your life. And I hope you feel encouraged by this. And this is why I wanted to share this with you guys. Life. There are also some really interesting questions with this study about ethical use of data. And the authors said that they talked to lawyers before publishing this study, but they ultimately decided it was ethical to publish this research because it was based on publicly available data that anyone can access. It's true. It's kind of interesting. It's like, are we allowed to use data leak information to do a research study? Like those people who are in the study didn't give consent. Uh, and so I'm really interested to hear what you've got to say about it. Uh, it's interesting to know that people who are unethical in their personal life are probably unethical in their professional life. And so here's the thing. If you got someone who's being kind of shady in their business and they tell you, no, 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 it's just business. Don't listen to them. People are people and personalities are personalities. If someone is this way over here, they're going to be that way over there, though they may lie to your face saying it. And honestly, if they're dishonest in their personal life or professional life, of course, they're going to lie to you about their dishonesty in the other areas of their life. So don't listen to them. Use your thoughts. Use your thinking. Be critical. Be on guard. But listen, be a good person because it pays off in the end. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.